So we are group six and we are researching inflation in Venezuela. This is Alex, Maylee, I'm Kaylee, and this is Karen. So we are going to talk about the current status of economic crisis that's happening in Venezuela, the history of Venezuela's economy, and implications on the U.S., as well as possible solutions and efforts being made. So some commonly used terms in this presentation are inflation, which describes the rate of increase in prices over time in relation to the decrease of the purchasing power of money. Hyperinflation is out-of-control inflation that increases at over 50% per month. And the Bolivar is the official name of the Venezuelan currency. And last, the Petro State is a nation whose economy is heavily dependent on the extraction and export of oil and natural gas, also known as an oil state. So when Nicolas Maduro was elected president in April of 2013, Venezuela snowballed into an economy unable to support its citizens' needs. As seen on the graph, inflation skyrocketed in 2013, causing an inaccessibility of necessary goods such as food. The Maduro diet is a term to describe the nationwide food crisis faced in Venezuela, named after the president of Venezuela. Most of the population is malnourished, with 74.3% of Venezuelan citizens losing an average of 19 pounds per person per year. With the food crisis and malnourishment, many families have resorted to scavenging through the garbage for food. Uh, this is the current president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, and um, he is the one that they named the diet after because he is the one that destroyed their economy. Um, most recently. Um, most countries uh, in the UN don't currently recognize him as the official president because of the corrupt elections and um, he is a very hated man. There are many protests against him and because of him the, wealth, the debt in the country has accumulated. So this is a quote that we found that talks about all the ways that Maduro has negatively affected the economy, including shortages on food, energy, and water, something that all the citizens need. According to the U.S. Department of State, Maduro is fully responsible for the hyperinflation and thus responsible for the humanitarian crisis and inaccessibility of basic goods and services. So it's important to understand how different currencies are used in Venezuela. While there are many different foreign currencies circulating within the economy, the two most, current, most used currencies are the Bolivar and the US dollar. The dollar accounts for over 60% of daily transactions. And since the value of the Bolivar has diminished significantly over time, its worth today is inconsequential. Many citizens use the Bolivar bills to make pieces of artwork to sell. Um, this TikTok shows banknotes which were made into forms of art, being sold as souvenirs on the streets of Bogota, Colombia. Uh, Venezuelan money, stacks upon stacks of it. Ever since hyperinflation happened in Venezuela, a lot of Venezuelans have immigrated into Colombia, and some of them have found creative ways to make a living through their native currency of Venezuelan Bolivars. Their biggest bill is 50,000, which is worth nine cents so this is like a hundred and twenty dollars you can see the scales and colors to them this is actually really cheaply made it's very uh look at this back side right there well this is a thousand bolivar notes which has an armadillo in the back and then there's this armadillo made out of thousand bolivar notes so we're gonna buy a, a collection of every minute for about eight dollars Uh, because of the extreme inflation, there is a significant decline in proper medical treatment between hospitals not having enough funds to purchase medical equipment and supplies, and uh, patients also unable to afford medical treatment. The Venezuela faces struggles with poor health care. This has even contributed to the increase of newer mortality rates. Uh, the Bolivar was named after the liberator Simon or Simon Bolivar, and um, it was originally created as a Subdenomination of Venezolanos, which was their previous currency uh, that they used for decades beforehand. Um, and then 
the Leonidas of 1879 uh, uh, instituted the Bolivar as a, an official currency unrelated to the Venezuelan and replaced the Venezuelan. And at this point, they pegged it to a silver standard. And a peg is a fixed exchange rate between currencies or precious metals, which just essentially um, serves to stabilize a, a currency to where they cannot just change it at will to meet economic needs. Uh, it remained stable for over a century until 1983, and it was considered the most stable currency in the region for over a century. So some major events within Venezuela's history are vital to fully understand the economic crisis that's being faced in Venezuela. And under the dictatorship of Juan Vicente Gomez in 1908, Venezuela was starting to become a petrostate or a nation that was heavily reliant on oil extraction and export. However, it wasn't until 1912 that the first oil well was drilled. And 17 years later, in 1929, Venezuela became the world's largest exporter of oil. And in 1935, Venezuela falls victim to the Dutch disease, which is a term used to describe a paradox that occurs when the focus on the de development of oil and natural gas harms other sectors of the country's broader economy. In this case, the agricultural and industrial sectors were affected. Because of this development, Venezuela become, became the world's second largest producer by the year 1943. And in 1973, Venezuela's economy becomes the strong, uh, even stronger <laughs> because of the nationalization of oil and steel industries. Um, in 18, or 1983, on February 18th, the Bolivar was sharply devalued against the US dollar. Um, this, for, this is the point at which the Bolivar was no longer considered stable. Um, between 18, or 1981 and 1983, oil profits from Venezuela had dropped by 30%. And since it was a petro state and they had they lost a large, large portion of their revenue from this. Um, they felt they needed to do something to compensate for the national debt. And to try to pay it off, uh, President Herrera Campins suspended a foreign currency exchange. Um, and he suspended it at first for two days, and then he extended it three more days. And then it eventually, by the time it was allowed to, uh, by the time they reinstituted the currency exchange, it had gone from they had gone from 4.3 bolivares per dollar to 7.5 in one week. And in that process, it became a floating currency. The peg was gone. This meant that they could um, change the value of the bolivar to suit their economic needs whenever they wanted. And the currency was permanently destabilized because they could change it whenever they wanted to make more money. It wasn't real money. So some more major events mentioned is um, in 1998, Hugo Chavez was elected president. And within the next year, he launches the Bolivarian Revolution. This new constitution espouses a socialist economy and social policies funded by the country's revenue from oil. With hopes of equally redistributing the wealth and land of Venezuela, Chavez organized an anti-poverty and vaccination campaigns to help meet the needs of its citizens. It was, it, wasn't, it was in 2002, however, when armed forces rebelled over a violent standoff between the government and the state oil monopoly. President Chavez was then taken into military custody with Pedro Carmona replacing him in office. This didn't last long and Chavez returned to his political position. Five years later in 2002, in 2007, Two leading U.S. oil companies, Exxon Mobil and ConocoPhillips, refused to hand over majority control of their operations in the Orencano belt of the Venezuelan government, which then expro expropriates them. In the next year, Venezuela and Russia signed an oil and gas cooperation accord. Um, so in 2008, President Chavez um, realized how how much faith had been lost in the Bolivar over the last few decades, and he, reintro he introduced the Bolivar Fuerte, which basically just means the strong Bolivar, and it was nothing but a rebranding of the 1,000 Bolivar note. It was just a higher bill, and they replaced lower transactions with, basically like if we were to eliminate using pennies and just started using quarters and said, our money's stronger, but, um, 
critics criticized this as a scam, a sham, and it was. And Chavez became increasingly reliant on devaluing the currency as an answer to, the, to their every economic challenge they ever faced because he's like, now people believe in it more. And so he thought he had more wiggle room to mess it up. So he devalued it five times after this point before his administration was over. So one of these times that he devalued the Bolivar was in January of, two, of 2010 when he devalued it to boost the revenue from oil exports after the economy shrank by 5.8% in the last quarter of 2009. Two years later, the government extends price controls on basic goods to fight against inflation. In March of 2013, 58-year-old President Hugo Chavez dies from cancer and Nicolas Maduro, his chosen successor, is elected president by a narrow margin. In 2014, the government announces cuts in public spending as oil prices reach a four-year low. Two years later, as the economic crisis becomes more serious, hundreds of thousands of people protest in Caracas calling for the removal of President Maduro, placing accusations of him being the one responsible for the economic crisis. Um, so under both the Chavez and Maduro administrations, it was illegal to publish an exchange rate of bolivares to dollars. Um, this was to blind the, the citizens to the true problem that the economy was facing. And the, Amer the American company Dollar Today ignored this command and regularly published an estimated rate. And the citizens of Venezuela started to use this for everyday uh, financial decisions and uh, financial planning for their futures. And um, yeah, next, next slide, part two. Uh, and Maduro condemned them as cyber terrorists for this. And they said he, he was trying to censor the Venezuelan people from knowing about what he was doing to the, to the currency. And in a 2015 speech, he called the website an attack on the currency, attack on the economy, and attack on commerce. He asked Obama to capture the terrorists. And the president of this organization, he was a worker at Home Depot. It's not like they were, you know, a big organized crime syndicate. And um, after after Dollar Today was shut down in Venezuela, um, he on the on the anniversary of Viernes Negro, he devalued the currency by thirty seven percent in one day. And without Dollar Today, the Venezuelan public was blinded to this. And oh wait, can you go back? In that picture shows protesters against Maduro, and the translation of that phrase is, Maduro, we're coming for you. So in 2017, the Bolivar officially passed the threshold of hyperinflation, and this is the effect of years of government mismanagement and intentional currency devaluation that had begun to snowball into a national crisis. The International Monetary Fund predicted that the inflation rate would rise to a million percent in 2018, at a rate like that, the Bolivar would become practically worthless. Oh. Uh, in 2018, the economy of Venezuela was on the verge of collapse, and uh, Maduro increased the Bolivar, or introduced the Bolivar Soberano, which means sovereign Bolivar. Uh, at this point, even the thousand Bolivar note that he had instituted ten years before had had um, inflated at such a rate that he had to introduce a bill of 100,000 fuerte sobrano, which is the same as 100 million of the original Bolivar from like only a decade before. And at this point, they had pegged, or when he introduced the sobrano, he initially started an exchange rate of 100,000, but he pegged it to Petro, which is a cryptocurrency linked to the Venezuelan oil business, but it's not actually directly linked to oil revenue or anything, it's just it's it's basically just a scam. He can they they control the price of uh, Petro, and the only companies that accept Petro are Venezuela are owned by the Venezuelan government. So um, in two thousand in two thousand twenty one, Venezuela was able to come out of the threshold of hyperinflation for the first time since two thousand seventeen. However, this event does not change the fact that Venezuela's inflation was still the highest in the world. So in 
So how the ASA rule views Venezuela, um, actually the European Council considered the presidential elections in May of 2018 uh, to be neither free, fair, nor credible, as well as lacking democratic le legitimacy. And they also believe the country urgently needs a government which truly represents the will of the Venezuelan citizens. So this quote from the US Department of State explains that since Venezuela's economy and politics is so corrupt with violations of labor rights and physical insecurities, the US and other multinational companies face moral challenges when dealing with international relationships with Venezuela. The domestic capital and international regulatory controls also make it difficult to repatriate earnings and import industrial and finished goods into Venezuela. These challenges resulted in many of the U.S. and multinational firms to reduce or shut down their Venezuelan operations. So the, uh, the United States response to this crisis is that President Donald Trump ceased trade relations with Venezuela in 2019 in opposition to Nicolas Maduro's negative involvement in the Venezuelan economy. And there were many jobs affected by this. In 2015 alone, U.S. exports to Venezuela supported about 82,000 American and Venezuelan jobs. One can imagine the jobs lost throughout all the combined trade relations sectors um, added to the negative impact introduced with COVID-19. So these are the 2019 trade relations right before uh, President Trump cut trade relations with Venezuela. So the U.S. goods and services trade was estimated at a total of 5.7 billion, and this was split up with exports estimated at 3.6 billion, imports estimated at 2.1 billion, and the U.S. goods and service trade plus estimated at 1.6 billion. Uh, Juan Guaido was de declared the acting president of Venezuela, Venezuela by the UN in 2019, and he is recognized as the tr true president by the United States, despite the fact that he was not um, voted upon by the Venezuelan people. He was declared president by Venezuelan authorities that were in opposition to Maduro, and so he was instituted in direct opposition to Maduro. And um, American diplomacy with Venezuela improved while uh, through discussions with Guaido. So um, in 2022, the Biden administration announced that the United States will resume foreign trade with Venezuela it hasn't yet been announced exactly when, but this was um, announced earlier this year, and it will possibly go into effect um, early next year. So, not so, some not so fun facts about uh, this crisis is the national debt in 2013, the estimated national debt of Venezuela amounted to around 890 billion US dollars. Unemployment rate. In 2021, the unemployment rate in Venezuela was estimated at approximately 6.41%. Uh, Venezuela's exports by 2012, the oils accounted for 95% of Venezuela's exports. Prices were soaring at over uh, $100 per barrel. And the uh, asylum applications, Venezuela recently surpassed China and Mexico as the largest source of asylum applications to the U.S. Uh, in this case, asylum seeker is a person that has left their country and seeking protection from persecution in their home country. And this could show the true standard of living in Venezuela due to all of the economic problems and the dictatorship in place there. So, implications for the U.S. Uh, there are many implications for the United States, including foreign businesses in Venezuela being affected by the violation of labor rights, the international regulatory controls concerning the disbursement of funds back into the United States, and importing the necessary industrial goods into Venezuela. Uh, this leads to inconsistent revenue, especially with the average annual Bolivar to dollar exchange rate. Furthermore, this affects the United States because many Venezuelan uh, citizens are fleeing from Venezuela into the United States both illegally and legally. So some possible solutions for this would, um, some attempted ones would be changing the currency. And Chavez and Maduro both changed the currency in Venezuela in order to control the inflation rate. These are temporary efforts the presidents both took in order to increase the purchasing power of the Bolivar. And um, the second one would be when President Maduro imposed a tax on purchases. 
made with foreign currencies to intent to incentivize oh, boulevard usage. This has actually worked to some extent. So some possible solutions that have not been done yet would be um, for the Venezuelan currency to be pegged to the US dollar or euro permanently. This would allow for the exchange rate to be consistent through time, making it harder for the government to devalue the currency whenever they ran into financial troubles. Another solution would be for the Venezuelan economy to completely merge with a more stable one, such as the United States or the United Kingdoms. Joining a stable economy may prevent Venezuela from recessing back into hyperinflation. So these are our sources in case you want to do some um, extra research on your own. And with that being said, thank you.